Well, good evening. A quick brief as to what we're doing tonight. For those of you who've not done a stations, it's an immense experience in my experience. What we're going to do is we're going to have a screen. The screen will have an image. The screen will have words. We will read the words. We will give you an opportunity to focus on the words. And the key to this, it's nothing over the top really it's it's about opening yourself and just letting yourself be touched by the images by the visions in your head it's an opportunity to follow jesus through from being seized and beaten whipped kicked and all the things that the passion is about really i suppose through to the cross and beyond so that the images touch you, let the words touch you. There'll be space, there'll be silence for prayer. Take the opportunities and hopefully between us where get somewhere that will be rewarding, beneficial and most of all a blessing. So let's just take a moment to settle ourselves and then we will begin. Station 1. Jesus is condemned to die. Jesus was captured at night taken away by soldiers, stripped of his garments, interrogated, tortured, crowned with sharp thorns, and now is handed over to be condemned to death by Pontius Pilate, death on a cross. We say together, we adore you, O Christ, and we praise you, because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world.
and as we reflect on the image and the condemnation of Christ. We pray for those whose voices have been silenced by injustice. As Pilate shows, the law can be used as a weapon against the weak. Jesus stands with those unjustly deprived of their liberty, of their land, of their future. We cry out with him to the Father of justice. Make us servants of your justice and truth. We each lift our own prayers where we are for those who suffer injustice. Lord Jesus, we pray for all of those who suffer injustice in our world today. Those who are wrongly imprisoned, those who are held captive in modern slavery, or other forms of exploitation. Station 2. Jesus takes up his cross. Jesus is led away, carrying the cross by himself. It's not just a piece of wood, it's everything that makes life difficult. Jesus carried the cross of his life without complaint, as a poor person and as an itinerant prophet. The calm and courageous way he put up with Pharisees' threats and his disciples' lack of understanding. The way he carried the burdens of his life, but in particular the way in which he carries this awful final burden. It transforms the cross from a symbol of condemnation into one of liberation. We say, we adore you, O Christ, and we, and we praise, praise you. you. 
because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. So we come to pray for those who are heavily burdened. The weight of our cross is only lightened by responding to Christ's invitation to come to him. May our own way of the cross lead us to him. So we pray for burdens ours and those of others. We reflect on Christ, his love, his passion. Father, you call us to take up our cross and walk with you. You promise that we will not be unequally yoked, that our burdens will be shared, taken up and lightened with the journey with you. So tonight, Father, we pray for those we know who have burdens that they would come alongside, that they would permit the Christ to come alongside to them, take up the load. Amen. Our third station, Jesus falls for the first time. Jesus falls. Here, Jesus shows us that being heroic does not mean staying on one's feet at all costs. But being heroic means getting up again after falling and starting off on the road chosen. Human beings never resign themselves to stay flat on the ground. But like Jesus, they will get up again, pick up their crosses and keep searching for promised lands of total liberation. We say together, we, we adore, adore you, O Christ. Christ. 
and we praise you, because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. We pray for those who fall and those whom we cause to fall. Each fall of Jesus is a sign of human frailty, but also a foretaste of his resurrection when he will break the chains of death to bring us salvation. Arise and come to our help, Lord Jesus, we pray. Lord Jesus, our human frailty means that we often fall. But we thank you that you are always there to lift us up again. Help us to be your hands that lift others. Jesus meets his mother. When Jesus and his mother meet, they just look at each other. Words cannot express how they feel. What he saw in his mother's eyes must have hurt him more than the raw pain of his wounds. This for Jesus is one of the most painful times of all as he experiences bereavement. We say together, we adore, we adore you, O Christ, and we praise you, because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. We pray for those whose only help is their family. <clears throat> and for those who lack even this. 
the road to Golgotha fulfills the words of Simeon in the temple. Mary watched and prayed over the suffering of her son. Many mothers around the world share this experience with Mary. Father, we pray for those who watch loved ones suffer through physical illness, through mental illness, through emotional pain, whatever the cause may be. We pray that they may be strengthened and comforted. and that with Mary they may be able to rejoice in a resurrection and a renewal. Station 5, Simon Helps Jesus Simon of Cyrene, a stranger in the city, didn't know Jesus, but that doesn't matter. What matters here is that in this moment of need, Simon was capable of lending his shoulders to one whose own had given out. He offered his strength to one who'd nothing left in taking on himself the cross which Jesus could no longer carry. We say, we adore, we adore you, you, O Christ, Christ and, we and we praise you, because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. We pray for those who come to the help of the poor and oppressed. Although it seems that Simon is just plucked from the crowd, it's the father who is sending help to his son. Those who help others are doing God's work and we too are called to play our part.
Father, as Simon came from the crowd, an unknown, a nobody, a stranger. Father, we bless you that all are strangers to others and yet can come forward and show your love, bear the burdens, come alongside. And Father, we thank you that just as Simon came alongside Jesus, your spirit comes alongside us. That he, the paraclete, sustains us, lifts us up and carries us through. May we always look to the cross of Christ, the love of the Father and the indwelling of his Holy Spirit. Veronica wipes the face of Jesus. Veronica was so moved by the sight of Jesus suffering that she bravely moved out from the crowd to wipe the blood and sweat from his face with a towel. She represents for us those women who bravely stand against the tyranny and cruelty of others. We say, we adore, we adore you, O Christ, and, and we praise you, because by your holy cross you, you have redeemed the world. We pray for those who help us recognise our true beauty and dignity. Veronica personifies all those who see through the pain and torture of others to recognise and love the true face of the Saviour. So let us pray for all who combat suffering, oppose torture and stand to rid the world of injustice. Father, we pray for all those around the world who are working in places of conflict, places of desolation, places where there is injustice, those who are not afraid to stand up and be counted and to stand for others. Mm -hmm. We pray for their protection and that their witness would inspire others to do the same.
Jesus falls for the second time. Stretched to breaking point by the brutal and awful scourging and bowed under the weight of the cross. Abandoned by his friends and alone, Jesus stumbles a second time. We say, we adore you, O Christ, and we praise you, because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. We pray for all those surrounded by fear. Fear can affect us all. The fear of loss, of failure, of death. Jesus has taken all these fears upon himself and he enters into them with us. We are never alone in the darkness of our fears. Pray for the light and presence of the Christ to enter into broken lives and bodies. Father, we know that your perfect love casts out fear. And as Jesus stumbles, beaten, broken, we see love made flesh, love made real for us. Father, may the love of Christ shine into our hearts. May it dispel our fears. May the love of Christ surround and uphold us and those we know and love. May it lift them. May it enter into broken lives, broken bodies, broken dreams and hopes. And bring resurrection, we pray. Jesus meets the women of Jerusalem. The women of Jerusalem wept when they saw how Jesus suffered. Jesus recognised their distress. Breaking his silence for the first time, he spoke to them and said, Daughters of Jerusalem, do not weep for me. Weep for yourselves and for your children. We pray for women who weep for their children as a result of oppressive and unjust governments and leaders.
we say, We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you, because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. We pray for the mothers in the poorer areas of the world and for all women who hope for a better life for their children. For the women of Jerusalem, the meeting with Jesus is a tearful moment. But in the tears of today, we're called to look forward to the hope of the resurrection. Lord Jesus, even in your moment of darkest despair and pain, you reached out to others. And so, even though we may feel the burden at the moment ourselves of darkness, we pray for those in other parts of the world those who don't have the freedoms that we enjoy. Those mothers who weep for their children. Lord, bring them that hope, that knowledge that you are with them and that you reach out to them even now. Mm. Jesus falls for a third time. Jesus falls for a third time. He's broken and exhausted physically and emotionally. Lying on the ground, he must decide. Does he get up once more or just stop and give up? We see him rise again and with all his strength he continues on his journey. Jesus shows us that we can go on, even if no one else believes that it's possible. We say, we, we adore you, O Christ, Christ and, and we praise you, because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. We pray for those who cannot trust in the rule of law. In Jesus, we see the suffering of all who are oppressed, not even the one who is truth can withstand the wave of lies directed against him. But he will lift up the cause of righteousness by his cross 
for he is faithful and his love is real. Father, when the world fails us, when the world fails those within it, we thank you that we have someone who stands up for us. We thank you, Lord, that beaten and broken, Jesus continues. Each one of us, he takes he lifts, he raises from the dust as he gets up. Each one of us, Father, he reaches out to take a hand, to lift us from the things that would suck us down into the mud. For Lord, by his cross, by his faithfulness, by his love, we are redeemed. Jesus is stripped of his clothing. As the clothes were ripped from Jesus, he was stripped of his dignity in front of an irreverent and abusive mob. Jesus sacrifices everything, holding nothing of himself back. Here on the very threshold of death, even more intensely than any time in his human life, he stands for all humanity. Here he surrenders everything in order to be a ransom for all. We say, we adore, we adore you, O Christ, Christ and, and we praise you, because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. We pray for those who are stripped of their rights and dignity. All that Jesus has is taken from him, even the clothes he is wearing. Every time the poor were stripped, this scene is replayed. When we work to restore the rights of the vulnerable, we make real in their presence the kingdom of God.
Lord Jesus, you gave everything for us and held nothing back. May we give everything for you and hold nothing of ourselves back as we work for the rights and the comfort and the provision of those around us. Mm. May we be as naked as you were. May we put aside all pretense, all posturing, and just honestly and humbly serve you. Mm. Jesus is nailed to the cross. Iron nails are hammered through his wrists and ankles. Iron piercing human flesh. Jesus nailed to the cross cannot move. Hands are caused, blind to see, ears to hear, life to return. Hands that bless children healed lepers and caused the lame to walk. Carpenter's hands are once more joined, touching wood again. And as the cross is put in place, he hangs there between us and God, a blood-stained victim for love. We say, we adore you, O Christ, and we praise you, because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. We pray for those who feel they no longer have the strength to face the trials of life. The tree of the cross is lifted up. This fallen tree becomes the source of life to all who share in Christ's sufferings. His weakness fills us with strength, especially in those moments when our struggles seem beyond our resources.
Christ was pierced for our sins. Nailed to a cross, broken, beaten, whipped for our sins. For Lord, it's not the nails that held him, but our sins. Help us not to take the Christ and nail him daily through our faults and failings. Help us to walk with him. Help us to be made different by him. Jesus dies on the cross. As Jesus' life ebbs away, his words are not of condemnation or self-pity, but of forgiveness. Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. In the midst of his anguish and suffering, Jesus calls upon his Father to forgive those who are putting him to death. This is the real challenge of the cross, forgiveness, even for those who had asked most. We say, we adore, we adore you, O Christ, Christ and, and we praise you, because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. We pray for the dying. By his death, Jesus rewrites the story of death. When confronted with our own death, God is there. The cross becomes his shepherd's staff and rod as he leaves us on the valley of death into his eternal provision and life. We pray for those with terminal illness, those who are coming to the end of their life through old age, or weakness and frailty, those who are fighting to hang on to life but may lose that battle. We pray, Lord, that they would know 
the truth of the resurrection and eternal life with you. Jesus is taken down from the cross. Mary takes the broken body of her son into her arms. In her grief, does she remember the words of her son over the bread? This is my body broken for you. Or over the wine, this is my blood poured out for you. She remembers him as a child in Bethlehem, worshipped by shepherds and magi, perhaps. She remembers when crowds followed him and hosannas rang out in the streets. We say, we adore you, O Christ, and we praise you, because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. We pray for all bereaved mothers. The scene at the foot of the cross revisits the scene at Bethlehem, but here there is no angel song, no gifts, no star only the sound of weeping. But this too is a moment of fullness, for as Mary receives the body of her Son, her communion with him and ours is made complete. Father, we thank you for this journey, for the pain, for the privilege, for the awe, Father, the world brings Jesus into it at Christmas and takes him out at Easter. A life lived, lived just short months, it seems, in the minds of uh, so many people. And yet for the years he trod this earth, for the years he ministered, for the obedience and the submission Father, we thank you that it comes to a place of darkness and death to give us that which we did not deserve. Jesus. 
Jesus is laid in the tomb. His body is laid in a dark tomb and a stone is rolled in front of the entrance. Like a, die, like a dying seed laid in the earth. All who had loved him and followed him are empty and exhausted. All sense of purpose has died with him. The tomb is closed and with sadness his followers leave. Mm. We say, we adore you, O Christ, and we praise you, because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. Father, we pray for our preparations this Easter. For unlike his followers then, we know that this ending is actually a beginning. Jesus' death brings new life for us. So let us pray for the church throughout the world. Let us pray for its life and witness made real in us and the lives of all believers. Father, inspire us again, we pray, as we reflect on the life and death of your Son, of the price he paid for us, and the freedom that he bought for us. And so we say together our father in heaven hallowed be your name your kingdom come your will be done on earth as in heaven give us today our daily bread forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil for the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and for ever. Amen. God, our Father, your Son suffered, died and was buried for us. In our moments of darkness, sorrow and suffering, shine in our hearts a ray of Easter light. Make us witnesses of the resurrection, servants of justice, worthy of our anointing as your children through jesus christ our lord amen, amen. 